Hi, Ashley. Appreciate uh, you joining us here on a, on a fine, what is it, Wednesday? It is, all day. Thank you for having <laughs> me. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, uh, would you mind uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Sure. My name is Ashley Moneypenny. I'm the conference planning manager at Winsbed Retreat and Executive Conference Center. Fantastic. Hey, I really appreciate I know you just got back from a, a, a very long road trip. So I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us to talk a little bit about the power of macro and micro meetings. Yeah, so uh, it's an interesting dynamic that um, I personally think is great because if you have your my macro meetings, it can end up being more informative. So if you're getting all of your staff together, you have a lot of uh, new um, plan that you're rolling out, or you just need to get them all together to get them on the same page. It's good for them to be able to receive information. It's not very good at information sharing back and forth hmm. um, when you get that many opinions in a room. Uh -huh. I, it's it's kind of hard to nail down an, an action plan going forward. Um, so that's where the micro meetings come in. And so you get the people that um, it's more intimate, it's more, um, it helps uh, downsize the takeaways. So uh -huh. you want to leave those meetings with outcomes, definitely, but definitely action items to follow up on people who make the decisions should be in those meetings. Um, there's there's an intentional purpose, maybe that's redundant, of who is in the room for those mm. because they are either following up and actually doing the work that's coming out of it. It affects their work. They, um, you know, so it, it's very intentional and um, I think it's more thought provoking to, you know, have input and buy-in from those people. Got it. Yeah. And to kind of follow up on a little bit, um, I have been to those situations where there's been a lot of people around the table or a lot of people in the room. Um, it's that in, that whole element of uh, you've got a lot of uh, cooks in the kitchen where when you've got a lot of input and, and it can be overwhelming and everybody has a say, and obviously, you know, you, you're spurring participation you know, having people engaged. And then you've got, you know, obviously personality conflicts. And I could see that, again, not necessarily coming from a meeting uh, planner's expertise, but somebody that has been part of that, I can see how it it can turn into really a, a sense where there's just a lot of people, there's a lot of conversation, a lot, not a whole lot of intention. So you can even share a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, you want to have effective communication and in fact, an effective conversations to even make movement on what you're trying to do, whether that be to implement a new program or to change policy or to make policy or, you know, whatever your outcome or what your goal is. If you don't have effective com communication or conversation around, you're not going to move the needle at all. Um, and it's just, it's another as I said before, another meeting that could have been an email that, exactly. you know, I mean, you, right. people, I hate to say people loathe going to meetings, but if there's not an agenda, there's not an intent, there's not, you know, pre pre reading material to know even what the meeting's about, which I think people sometimes forget that um, it, 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 you want your participants to come prepared and engaged so that they're part of the meeting and not just watching the clock through the meeting and that's they're waiting good... for lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you see a direct correlation between getting the, the attendees engaged, actually participating in the meeting versus something that's so large, you know, you've got a few people that are pretty bold, they're pretty outspoken, they dominate the meeting. And then you've got a group of people that are just, you know, not necessarily forced, but they don't see an opportunity to, to be included in that. Do you, would you say that that would be a, a, a direct yeah. correlation between participation and... Absolutely. I mean, for one, I think it's easier to have an opinion and to represent maybe a department or you and five other people within a person group of 30 people 
right? Speak your mind and say, these are, this is how we feel about X, Y, and Z versus a person standing up in 200 people to say, well, this is how I feel. And that, you know, I mean, that at that point, you should just have like a suggestion box on a table and people right. can drop it in anonymously. Because exactly. I, I just don't know many people that have the gusto to stand up and that's do a good point. Like that. I hadn't thought about that. There's so there, there could be an intimidation factor of somebody that um, that is not necessarily comfortable in standing up and doing that. So I could see how that you wouldn't hinder uh, someone's ability to participate just by the sheer numbers of the, of the audience, right? I didn't, I didn't. Well, and I, th and I think it could go either way because some people, I mean, I've stood up in a room of not 200 people, but because in the back of my mind, I always think, okay, so how many other people in this room are thinking what I'm thinking, but don't want to say it. Hmm. I'm always good for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> that can go either way. Um, but then on the other hand, it's like, well, my, I'm an employee and my opinion is valid and it, I, I should be heard. And I mean, so I think if people that would want to do that, I mean, I think there's a time and place, maybe not in the middle of a 200 person, um, event, but yeah, I think it just depends on the person and what the topic is. Okay. So what, what, what would be a sweet spot of what would nest, what would define a micro meeting? Like, I guess, number of people would obviously that's a, that's an event. So how would you define uh, specifically it's okay. This is a micro meeting. Yeah. I think, uh, any, you know, 40, I would think 40 or less people. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I mean, you could look at it at a different scale of eight to 10 people. Mm -hmm. But you really, I guess, have to make sure that those people are able to make movement and change. Mm, okay. Because that's going to be involved with whatever you're meeting on. Right. It, it, as simple or as complicated as whatever you're talking about is, it, you need to make sure that you have people that can make movement or make change. And so if you have 40 people, most likely, okay, so not all of them will have direct action items, mm -hmm. but you'll get enough input either by doing, you know, breakouts with brainstorming sessions. And so then it's grouped for you and easier, hmm. easier information to easier digest and go through if it's broken down into groups. Um, so I, I I would, I kind of think like between eight people and 40 people is kind of a good amount. Great. Now do you, between, that's a pretty broad 40 it, and eight it people. Is. So what would be a, what, do you have a particular sweet spot where you, you've been part of planning an event and you're like, wow, this is a great group. They're getting a lot done. There's a lot of ideas, a lot of things flowing, but you can see that they're actually making progress and that it's not just a bunch of brainstorming ideas. You can see that. And so any particular ideas on what that might look like? So I would say around 20, 25 people okay. would be good. Great. Okay. Um, that's enough people to have buy in the key stakeholders, people that are generating ideas, implementing ideas, making, you know, having that movement and you can see that they're actively meeting by meeting progressing you know through um the convene you know the yeah. the chain of what they want to accomplish great yeah no that makes all kinds of sense um so speaking of that i um i was hoping that you could share maybe an example of a meeting that you that came to mind that might fall in that into the, that particular threshold yeah, so there was um, the meeting for Racine uh, Collaborative for Children's Mental Health, and they would meet here, and um, it was fostered over a couple years to the point um, they had about um, 30 participants um, from different sectors of buy-in, whether it was from the city, schools, therapists, uh, funders, you know, from all different sectors. Uh -huh. um, and so they would meet and over two years, they got to the point where they made lots of movement, did a report out to the community to let's say, hey, this is what's happening. And they started a pilot program in one of the schools 
here and it took off and now they're still out there and they're in more schools now. So it all worked out. Mm -hmm. um, as a planner, it was, I don't want to say it was an easy group to deal with, but by the third meeting, you know, all their dietary restrictions, right? Right. The setup's usually the same. Maybe there's more handouts here or there that need to be printed. Um, name tags, player. I mean, it, the, the AV, everything was just very streamlined because they just, they would pick up where they left off and say, okay, these action items were taken care of. Let's move on to X, Y, and Z. Hmm. And then it was just, it was neat to see the progress of it. So that's great. Now, I'm sure they come back to you and say, oh my God, Ashley, that was great. Um, and, and, and to get that personal feedback from you, it's got to feel good, right? I'm, a, I'm a, especially in an area like education, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it feels good to be involved, even just, I don't want to say just as a planner, but as, as someone who's helping to convene these people, as a meeting planner, in my perspective, you want to gather people and take away all of the distractions and everything that they have to usually think about. So you go to a venue and you have to pick menus and you have to print everything out. Okay, so I pick the menus for, for this group in particular. They didn't have to worry about that. We put food out for the breaks at the time that they were breaking. We made sure that they had all of their printed materials, the name tags were made. That, I mean, they were set. So literally they could come in, they knew everything was taken care of. The trust was in the venue and they proceeded with their meeting. Right. And so it just took, I don't know, I think a lot of people that I work with, they have these extra stressors and yeah, like I mean, you know, more, right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, you gotta take stuff off their plate so that they can fully be engaged into the meeting and not worry what they're having for lunch or right. you know stuff like that. So sure, no, that's absolutely great, fantastic. Well, hey, I really appreciate you spending a few minutes with us. I, I know you're super busy, so I'll let you get back at it and uh, look forward to picking up uh, and have a conversation a little bit further down the road. Sounds great. Thank you.